great young man. I see it now, a journey where you encounter a strong-willed woman. Take care, for she could cost you money, lots of money. Well, today, those who claim to see into your future, guided by a crystal ball, your stars, your palm, your aura, numerology, the tarot card. Now, clairvoyant psychic Simon Turnbull runs a psychic hotline. Simon, how many calls has your psychic hotline had in the past, uh, say, six months? 18,000 calls. 18,000 calls. I'd say that's popular. <laughs> I'd say that's popular. All right, well, Fiona McCallum, clairvoyant with Woman's Day magazine, gets about four to 5,000 letters a week. And those figures are just a tiny, tiny fraction of the numbers of people who turn to those like our guests here today to find out about their love life, their money, careers, their health and travel. Well, why are so many of us so eager to base important life decisions on this sort of advice? Can it be dangerous? Does it say something about you if you believe it? Or can, you, can it give you a lift? Our resident psychologist Grant Brecht will be giving us a bit of insight into that later. But first, what's it all about? Let me come over here to John Clark. John, you're an astrologer. Why would someone come to you? First of all, it, it is usually because they've got a crisis in their life and they're saying, why me? Why has this happened to me? But as that goes on, as they gradually get to know what astrology is about, then they start to use astrology in a positive way and come to astrologer in order to find out what the difficulties are before they actually happen. All right. Now, Rachel, what is it you want to find out? Um, well, I have no crisis, I don't think, but... Um, <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I forgot to tell you. <laughs> well, what do you want to find out? What's your question? Um, I'd just about my health and career, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Now, jo John, how do you use the stars to tell Rachel what she wants to know? Well, with regard to career, we don't look at a, a, a person's chart and say, right, your career is there in black and white. Right. What we have to do is to take the personality traits that are there, the, the potential that there is in various areas, and put those together. Uh, and then say this is the type of area where you will be able to get the uh, the most benefit from it uh, from a personality point of view and with uh, with Rachel uh, she has several things here that are excellent for presentation of herself she's got a good mind a good she's a good talker mm -hmm. able to present herself well there's a, a sense of insecurity there which she needs to overcome and by well, uh, I'll tell, I'm going to stop you there because right. I think we'll come back and find out how accurate your reading is right, in a moment. Fine. Okay, yes. we'll give you some time there. Yeah. All right, let me come round to Margaret Smart. You're a numerologist. Now, what's a numerologist? What a numerologist is, Trish, is that I look at the name and date at birth as on the birth certificate. And from that, every letter of the name vibrates to a number. And we can work out exactly where the person's going in life, the timings, the major changing points in their life. The major turning points that they have. All right. Well, Simon Reynolds. Hello, Simon. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> now, you changed the spelling of your name to improve your numerology, didn't you? I did. I did it when I was 18. And I, at first, I didn't believe at all in any of this kind of stuff. But I met a numerologist who was so accurate, I thought, well, you know, you might as well give it a go. So you now spell your Simon S double I. Correct. M O N. Now, Margaret, how, how does it all work? Just quickly with a bit of, of Simon. Well, just looking with Simon's name at birth. Um, he actually changed his name in at, at a completion year in a nine year and a new beginning year so he was going into a new f cycle of his life at that point in time so it was a new beginning but changing the name you can see the difference in the energies of the vibration you are always meant to achieve with the name that you came into this world but when you change the name you can add to it and actually improve the energy. So he's, he's improved that, has he? Yes, he has. Glad to hear that. <laughs> All right. Now, James Wainless, you're credited with being one of the best-known tarot card readers in the world. What do you do? Well, I simply use the, the, the tarot deck as a map of our consciousness, and we intuitively select a card, and with the visual symbols in the cards, they mirror or reflect back to us who we are in our own consciousness. Do you have to shuffle them or anything? Oh, first? absolutely. You shuffle them up, and then you just intuitively select one. All right. Well, Jason, your question for James. Um, well, basically, I'm uncertain about one certain relationship that I've been in for a long time, and supposed to be linked to a marriage and I'm a bit unsure and just want to know if you can give me any uh, confirmations of my doubts. You're going to base everything on the turn of a car. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> <But> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. so James, no, it just might help a little bit. Might help. James, how will you find an answer for Jason? 
Well, well I'll ask uh, lots of questions about a relationship. For me, the most important one is what's the purpose of this relationship? Why is she involved with this person? And see what the cards have to say. And the cards are just simply information. And from that information, then we make our own decisions. Okay. Now, Simon Turnbull, so you're Simon with... Uh one eye, yeah. okay. Uh, you're president of the Australian Psychic Association. We met you before. How do you become a psychic? Well, um, it's really a case of uh, wanting to learn, especially from a male's point of view, because women have got their intuition there, sort of worked out there. Yes, I know. Um, but men have to work a little harder. But it's a case of trusting your feelings. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do, once you learn to trust your feelings, then you're going to be at a, at a terrific advantage over people who, who just try to logically work everything out. Mm. Now, Annie, your question for Simon is what? I'm actually interested in travelling. Um, how much travelling am I actually going to be doing? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. And S Simon, how do you actually get to use your, I mean, wh what do you do to get the information for Annie? Well, I'll tune into Annie's feelings and in a sense I'll try to feel uh, as if I were Annie for that moment in time. Um, How close do you have to get? Can yeah, you do this on close television? Close as possible. <laughs> In this case. All right. And uh, we'll come back to you for that answer later. Well, while, uh, s while Simon, James, Margaret and John answer our audience members' questions, I'm going to get my palm read by palmist Bruce Alden. Now, which hand do you need, Bruce? Actually, I'll use both. Oh, Kesha. okay. Simply that, uh, uh -huh. yes, palms up. Thank you. <laughs> Simply uh, the left hand represents what can happen and the right hand generally the way that you operate on that particular information. Okay. Now you have some very, very well defined lines. Your headline here, this line here, is very, very strong. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means that you think very cleverly or very hard about what you actually want to achieve. <laughs> You're very headstrong, in fact. Uh, here, your lifeline, this one that runs down the inside of the, the thumb, uh, it's showing a, a slight break here earlier in life. Now, this could have shown uh, an, an illness of some mm -hmm. description. Did you have an illness around about the mid-childhood? Fairly severe problems? No? Okay, it can also mean uh, emotional upheaval at that time. Right. However, it does strengthen up. Further down now, your your fate line, which is this line that runs down through here, mm -hmm. is a little bit fainter. Um, however, it's showing that you have here where it, there's a small cross. Yeah. It shows that you have certain intuitive abilities, perhaps stronger than the average person. All right. Well, my intuition tells me that we're being given the wind up. So, <laughs> coming up, find out what's meant to be in store for our audience members. How accurate our psychics are, and could their predictions hurt you? Psychologist Grant Brecht on that.